My name is Sinead Millwood. I'm a junior doctor currently working on the intensive care unit at Southmead Hospital in Bristol. I made time to organise these sessions because it was something I was passionate about, something that I, that I really wanted to do. I suppose I just took time from in between my duties um, to have meetings with different people. Setting up the sessions themselves was not difficult because we have teaching every, every week for two hours and it wasn't, it wasn't difficult to get a slot for the junior doctors to have those discussions. During my second job as an F1, I made a, a serious mistake. I made a, an identity error, which resulted in a patient having an unnecessary transfusion. Um, whilst this was a near miss, the patient doesn't appear to have suffered any harm. Um, I felt dreadful about it. Um, I felt ashamed. Um, I was mistrustful of my own ability as a doctor. Um, I felt like other people were looking at me and pointing the finger when in reality they, they didn't know about it. Um, and I felt alone. I was worried that other junior doctors were going through a similar thing um, and that because nobody was talking about it, nothing was being done about those mistakes. Um, and I thought that probably the, the best way to process a mistake would be just to sit around and talk about it with your peers and try to come up with ways to prevent a similar mistake happening in the future. I spoke to a few of my friends, other F1s, about it and they said they thought it was probably a good idea but that it would be difficult to get people to speak out. Um, I knew that I needed the support of um, senior staff within the hospital so I spoke to my educational supervisor who is also uh, the patient safety lead consultant. Um, he was in support of it and said that he would facilitate the sessions. Um, and I also spoke to Joe Howarth, who is the leader of patient safety within the clinical governance department. Um, and she was also in support of it. It's being pushed forward at the moment within the NHS to promote a culture of no blame. The reality is that that's, that's not where we're at at the moment and the only thing that's going to improve things is to do more sessions like this across the board. The main focus of the sessions is for one junior doctor to, to stand up or sit down and, uh, and talk about a mistake that they've made openly and honestly and just, just say what happened. Then you can, as a group, try and focus on what were the reasons why that happened um, what were the contributing factors? Was it stress? Was it time pressures? Was it being unsupported? Um, or was it something within the system that's wrong? Was it a protocol that's just wrong? Um, and then, as a group, you can come up with ideas for how to try to prevent that same mistake happening again in the future. So, for example, uh, one of the most common mistakes amongst junior doctors at Yeovil, and I imagine in a, a lot of other places, was prescribing penicillin or any drug to an allergic patient. So, for example, cotrimoxazole is often prescribed to trimethoprim allergic patients because it doesn't contain the name within um, the, the commonly used wording of the drug. Again, uh, one, of the, one of the main contributing factors to that were busy, fast surgical ward rounds where you see a patient like that and move on and you don't, you don't think to look at the front of the chart. Um, and then the ideas that the junior doctors came up with to try and combat this, this very common mistake, uh, one of them was to, to introduce red allergy bands for the patients because at the moment they were white with a tiny red dot on, not very visible. Uh, and another one was to write allergy status uh, on the patient's bed space on the board above their bed. Usually what happens is everybody in the room says, oh, I've made that mistake, or oh, I've done a similar thing to that. The person feels reassured that they're not the only person, they're not the, the only doctor in the world who's, who's made that mistake, and they stop punishing themselves and start looking for, for something positive from it. Changing anything in a big organisation is really, really hard. 
um, it's difficult to get other people, even if they're interested, it's difficult for them to, to become involved and ingratiated into the project because it's your project, it's not their project. Um, and you have to show them that it's worth doing, which takes time and a lot of effort. I would say that you need, you can't do it on your own. You need the support of, of other people within the hospital. Um, keep it simple. Um, I tried to make it too complicated at first. I tried to do more than what I should be doing. Um, and as soon as I stepped it back, it, it, everything ran more, more smoothly. PDSA Cycles um, Plan Do Study Act um, model for improvement was perfect for, for my project because it was a monthly session. So I could change a small thing each session and, and improve the quality, just drive the quality up with each PDSA cycle. Before I left, um, I did the junior doctor's induction. Um, and I tried to get some of the F1s on board and they were very, very keen, very enthusiastic to be involved. Um, and I left a couple of F2s behind me who, who were um, also quite passionate about it and they were happy to take it on and teach it to the, junior, the new junior doctors. Um, and now there's a parallel session that's been set up for Foundation Year 2 doctors, so there's two sessions running for both years. I'm trying to set up the same sessions in uh, Southmead Hospital. Southmead Hospital is about three or four times the size of Yeovil District Hospital. Um, it's, a, it's a new challenge, it's a completely different situation. The junior doctors are a lot more spread out and um, it's difficult to get them all in one place at one time. And even if you do, then there's too many people for a session. So you have to split into groups. Quality improvements projects do not need to be big projects, they can just be um, a small change which can have a big impact. For example, um, by changing the allergy bands, um, which is something that's come out of this project, um, from, a, from a white allergy band to a red allergy band, which makes it more prominent, um, you, can, you can prevent any number of allergy prescribing mistakes. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the future holds for me at the moment. Um, I'm planning on uh, travelling to another country next year and working in a, in a resource poor country, although I haven't completely decided where. Um, and after that I'm considering anaesthetics and I'm also considering GP. So I have some decisions to make. <laughs>